Hi everyone, it's Chenzo from Reality Art Pod. I'm here to talk about the challenge season 39, episode 7, titled So Flip Floppy. Last week on the challenge, Big T and Melissa were sent down into elimination, where Big T became the first person to beat Kaz in elimination. Before I dive in, links in the description to see the playlist of the rest of my challenge recaps. So let's dive into it. Big T and Melissa skip back to the house to celebrate Big T winning elimination and protecting the money. Big T knows the sneaky contenders are still going to be coming for she and Melissa. Sexy, jazzy music plays as Callum tells us that at night, things get steamy in the house. He calls Horacio a horny little man and that Horacio and Narice have been hanging out but not kissing. James has been putting on the Essex boy charm on Mariah and Callum and Michelle are shown making out in the hot tub as Callum tells us he feels like he has his fingers in all the pies right now. Moving on. Horacio and Berna talk. She gives him advice about his dating life with Norris. She tells him that he's struggling with his social game. Corey tells Melissa about feeling on the bottom of the American Alliance. Melissa hints to Corey that he's basically going to be effed if he doesn't switch to her side. Callum talks about his motivation and he shouts out his family but not his girlfriend back home with the whitest teeth of any family I've ever seen. Emmanuel says he's there to help his mom retire from home cleaning. They get to the daily challenge. There are pyramids suspended over water called Working the Angles. They'll be in six teams and they have to replicate a puzzle on one pyramid to the other, swinging back and forth. The winning team will be safe from elimination. Olivia, Jay, and Colleen go first. Olivia has a close call and almost falls. I feel very nervous about Olivia hurting her face again, so I'm glad that she doesn't fall. Jay climbs across the pyramid like a squirrel. Spectator Emmanuel accuses Colleen of being colorblind because she's giving terrible color directions to her team and they do terribly. James, Emmanuel, and Melissa go next and James is reminded that he broke his face doing something like this on his season, but he makes it across and they're quick and efficient and communicative. Team 3 is Zara, Callum, and Michelle. Callum doesn't want to look like a dweeb in front of Michelle, and they do pretty well. The next team has four people with Nerys, Ed, Mariah, and Asif, and it doesn't really seem like they did anything to make this any harder for the team of four people, so it just doesn't seem very fair or well thought out. One of these four should have had to sit out, but Mariah is useless at this anyways. She doesn't want to mess up her $13,000 nose job, and I don't blame her, so she relaxes on the side of the pyramid holding the rope. Kylan, Horacio, and Big T are next, with Big T as the caller, and they crush it, especially because the boys are quick. Berna, Raven, and Corey, and Corey is afraid to swing, so he's the caller. Olivia says Berna's ass cheeks are glistening in the sun, and they make Berna's butt cheeks a real talking point here. Even giving Berna a confessional about her butt cheeks, Berna starts royally messing up the puzzle, and Michelle screams at her to fix it from the sidelines. Overall, I found this challenge pretty boring and easy. Nobody fell off the rope, which would have made for better TV and more chances for people to struggle with the puzzle. Also, the puzzle was really easy. All the pieces were the same layout, so they only needed to call out what color was on top. Kylan, Tarasio, and Big T win and are safe. They have to pick one man to send into the arena. Kylan wants to nominate Emmanuel and Horacio is not down for that. TJ puts Horacio on the spot and he really struggles to give TJ an answer but he does end up saying Emmanuel. Jay says that Horacio and Kylan pissed off Dracula aka Emmanuel and that they shit the bed. On to my favorite part of every episode, they are going to the club. Callum instantly says that he doesn't trust Norris. Berna quickly co-signs this. Callum says that Norris is playing Horacio like a puppet. The house finds out that Corey has been exploring the other side and the American Alliance are not happy with Corey. Outside, Michelle sets up a date for she and Callum the next day, including hand-picked flowers from the backyard. They kiss and have a date, and this is hard to watch because Michelle is smitten, but we all already know what we know about Callum having a girlfriend. At nominations, Emmanuel tells the group that he's gathered them for a nice round of butthole kissing. I can't believe this is televised. The crowd goes wild for this. Asif says, let's cut the BS. He says, Corey, your name is going around the house. Raven calls Corey flip floppy, so I guess that explains the episode title. Corey announces he's been playing the Brits. It's very obvious that Corey is trying to cover his tracks. I don't think he's making a big impact, but it acts as a pretty decent TV moment. Nari says, if you were being a spy, don't you think you would have told at least one person about it? She calls him shady, a fake, and a liar. Everyone ends up voting for Corey. Melissa calls him an absolute bitch who treated her like she had no humanity. They go straight to the elimination and the mercenary is Devin who, like Kaz last week, I think is one of the more beatable mercenaries. But Emmanuel points out that Devin has beat him in elimination before. Michelle calls Devin chaos personified, which acts as a good soundbite, but I don't think Devin is really that chaotic. TJ reminds us that two of the polls in the draw have names on them and the other one, well, we have to find out. And then we find out it's just a big mace with no name on it. Devin gets to pick any man he wants to go against except for Kylan and Horacio who are safe, which I wasn't expecting and I guess is an okay twist. Devin says his objective is to ruin someone's day.
Devin asks the crowd who he should pick, and he says he's not going to pick anybody he already knows. He calls down Callum. Michelle is mad at Devin, but how is he supposed to know that they're hooking up? They'll be playing Totally Mental, where they have to gather crates, count the items in them, and then sort them from low to high. This elimination was pretty whack to me. I get that they want to prop Devin up as a champion and give him a counting competition so he cannot get his ass kicked, but I feel like they sat around and thought, what's an elimination that Devin wouldn't do bad in? And the only thing that they can come up with was counting. It's just so insulting to Devin, I think. The challenge starts, Devin spills out a box which puts Callum off to an early lead. Callum kicks Devin's spillage pieces around to make Devin's life harder. Everyone's helping Callum count. Devin asks for a check first and is wrong. Callum is wrong too, but Devin does end up winning and eliminating Callum and taking $10,000 from the pot. And we have to say goodbye to Callum. I'm of two minds about Callum because obviously his behavior is terrible, but he's also a really somehow likable guy and a great reality TV character. I can't wait to see the reunion for the continuation of the Michelle Callum drama where she can confront him and I'm sure that Michelle is going to have a really great moment of self-respect and stand up for herself. It's insane that this never came to a head on the screen, but Callum is dating someone now and it's not Michelle. He keeps it pushing as we've seen. I'd actually like to see Callum on a few more seasons because he brings the house drama that's been oh so lacking in the past few years. And sometimes there's so much heavy drama and like really terrible things that people do on these shows that are such a headache that relationship drama is a welcome relief. So that's all I have to say about this week on the challenge. I'll be back next week to talk about episode eight. So please subscribe so you don't miss it. Until then, have a nice weekend. Stay safe. Bye.